Hi, Elsie. It's so lovely to finally get you onto our podcast. We're, we are actually really, 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 really excited. But I can't maybe. wait to turn the questions around because you've interviewed us twice, <laughs> but we have never been able to really interview you. So I'm really excited about this one. I try to stay out of the hot seat sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't escape the two of us, though. You know that. <laughs> I know. It's a, it's a wrap. I'm over now. I'm over now. Fixing to get it. <laughs> Fixing to get it. <laughs> so how's things been for you since we last spoke? Are you good? Well, yeah, I'm really, really good. Um, in fact, well, you know, personal growth is personal growth. Recovery is full of personal growth. And so I get excited about growth, even though, you know, it's hard. It's really, really hard. In this time, we've had all of, all of our stability shaken up. And, you know, these were the times when, when in times past, I would have just had to use to, you know, to just go through because you believe that's all you can do. You believe that, oh gosh, I can't handle all this stuff at once. And, and with COVID and, and us losing our house and, and, and just so many things, like we lost everything our stability was built on, but it's really, really good because what I've learned in recovery in being sober is that those things aren't being taken away as a, a as a meanness to to hurt me they're actually being moved aside so new things can come in which you ladies know plenty about you guys are doing great new things i'm so proud and excited for you oh do you think sometimes we have this vision don't we that um when you get sober it's all pink fluffy clouds and amazing and if you've seen ever seen that quote about like spiritual enlightenment what people think it's like and then what it's really like and it shows like this poof this explosion of like and I'm a massive believer in that and sometimes we've got to like wipe everything get everything out yes to to yes. grow but like you say it's really really hard so what kind of tools have you been using to help you through this time <laughs> i have really been using a lot of uh, a lot of spiritual practices like you know I, I study a course in miracles i use a lot of the teachings from there um i really grabbed my, my recovery program has been a grab at everything that moves me so i use nlp in my mind to kind of switch things around i use um buddhist teaching i, I use a little Tao Te ching i use everything that helps me not go into those old mindsets because being in active addiction for me was according to mindset it was how i was thinking about things not necessarily how they were and what I've learned is that nothing really has any meaning other than the meaning I give it. So it's always presented us with a choice of, yeah, all of this stuff is going away and it's really hard. And I think what we fail to speak about sometimes is it's okay to grieve those things and it's okay to feel sad and it's okay to, you know, feel reminiscent. But what it's not okay to do is let that pull you back into that old story of addiction. I can't handle this. I can't do this. I, I need to escape this because what we all three know better than anybody is you don't escape it. It's all still there. You're just adding new crap to it by all the stuff you do when you don't know you're doing it, you know? So I, I just have really been drawing on everything and at the same time allowing myself to just be in all of this it's perspective and it's what you so said funny. is really real lisa because i told my my wife we're in a different um recovery years and we're in a different thing and and she started going through a little enlightenment and i said wait a minute now i need to let you know <laughs> before you open the box <laughs> that um it's not pretty all uh, it really comes in and, and you have to unlearn all those things and the unlearning process can trip you up sometimes but just stay in because you can't close the box once you open it so you know it's really it's raw fun. isn't it that's the thing whether you're happy whether you're sad it's just pure and raw 
and sometimes it's yeah. really and horrible and sometimes it's really joyous and beautiful and like you know we the other day on on instagram i'm pretty sure you commented on it actually but the other day on instagram we put a post up of us two in ireland and we were out of it at that point we were weren't we lisa out of it but you know what we've been kind of we've always been authentic we've always been very true to ourselves and as we're moving along our journey it's really easy to forget who you were yeah what we've said is look you know like we're not glorifying who we were but that's who we were you know that's what brought us to this point so let's just brush it away as if it didn't exist either yeah absolutely I, I feel you on that I'm glad you said that because I struggle with that sometimes as well you know just just thinking am I getting too far away from who I was to be able to now help people come over here or you know just just who am I at this point because you know there's this there's this difference because you know I was very very attached to the person that I was I was attached to that old story victim you know ruined my life had made too many mistakes to to do anything with it I'm too old I mean all the stories that we tell ourselves in fear of leaving that life behind because I think what we what we use a lot for at least for myself was to not feel and to to not I I didn't think I had the capacity to experience happiness so I I thought that using was the only time I could be happy. And I was afraid to leave that. I was really afraid to leave that in fear because what do we know about the old model of recovery? It's drudge to the meetings and sit down and talk about all the struggles. And, you know, I don't have anything against that. If it helps people, that's amazing. But it didn't help me. And that was the fear that came in. It's like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? If I can't do that, how am I going to do this? And we have a fear of leaving that old story, but I'm with you on that. Like I often think, gosh, you know, am I getting too far away? How am I ever going to help somebody come this way? Because that's what my passion is, just like you ladies. I total, totally relate to that is sometimes when you're thinking about going back and drinking, like for me, it's just so obvious now that drink is not going to help it's it's so obvious that you worry that you are going to forget so when people are struggling the answer like well just don't drink that's not really going to help anybody <laughs> because we do we forget about it don't we so i am totally with you on that it's we need to go back sometimes to remember that to put ourselves yeah. in that place to help people through but something i hear a lot about and um, there was a live on instagram the other day that i kind of honed in on for a little bit that somebody were doing and they were saying about the sobriety accounts and the positive and the inspiration and the you know the happy jolly ones um, and always all that and I'm like they want something a bit more with depth and I kind of sat there and I was like you know what though for me I get it and I get the depth and I get the being real you know we do have to be real but for yeah. me looking at somebody like you that is positive that is inspiring that's what inspires me I don't want to go and talk about all the dark times like you said the recovery meetings they're brilliant they help people and you've got to find your own way there's no right way yeah but for me your presence and your attitude and how you do it is right what's the word I'm looking right, right up your street yeah that is what it is it's right up my street because I want to see people living a happy wonderful sober life that inspires me but it doesn't mean we don't have to be real you know like you say you've had a really rough time by the sounds of it yeah thank you so much for saying that I feel the same way about you guys that's why I was drawn to you in the beginning was oh good there's somebody else out here trying to you know really move this movement forward because you know it's true and I've had a really rough time and I've made sure to to get on my platforms and share about that because I do want people to see the the realness because here's what the deal is Lisa this really is us now like this is real yeah. for me and this is real for y'all and and you know, and this is the real that I like. To me, that wasn't real. That was the old story. That was full of fear. That was, that was nothing but fear. And when I, you start living a free life, that's not, 
that's not really you. You find out that wasn't you, that this is who I am. And, and it, I think it is important for us. And I love your transparency in everything you post. That's why I'm so drawn to it because it is, I think it's important that we got to show people how to get through tough things by being real and who we are now. Like these are the processes that I use. And if I can use them and they work for me, I mean, the best you can do is try them. They may just work for you. I'm going to go all in and say they will work yeah. for you because I was lost, man. Like I was a lost soul. I crawled out from under a rock on the verge of suicide after three suicide attempts, four fatal overdoses, probably seven, you know, death accidents. You know, like there came a time that said, okay, well, what the heck am I here for then? You know, it's like everybody I knew around me was, was, was dropping in overdose. They were dying. I mean, for a moment, I was the only one standing. And I thought, there's got to be something else to this. I'm not going to be able to stay clean and sober if I stay in that old mind, if I live in that old life. And if I drudge to those things, talk about that. And there's a moment that maybe you ladies will understand that you fight for that. Like yeah. the, the new, the you that's emerging fights with that old story and let go. And there's a moment in there where you don't know who you are. You're just like, I'm being fake. I, 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 I'm this miserable person. I'm not this nice, happy, jolly, you know, sober person. I'm the miserable one. And it's just a battle. I think every day we're going through that. It, that is so true. That, that bit about not knowing, not knowing who you are and not knowing whether you're being real. And, you know, Lisa and I talk about this a lot. We're actually very different and not because we're different in what we would like to share, but we're different in what we can share sometimes. So, you know, awesome. it's no secret, no secret to anybody that, you know, my childhood is no secret to anybody. The fact that I had two miscarriages in the last two years, no secret to anybody. The fact that I had a breast cancer scare three weeks ago, no secret to anybody. And then I think sometimes people look at us and think, oh, you know what? Alex is sharing all these really hard experiences. Lisa's got an easy life. And what we don't see is that Lisa battles with a lot more than I've had on my plate. A lot. Yeah. More. But then she doesn't, she can't talk about it at the time because of circumstances, because of family. And then afterwards, she'll come out and say, I've just had a really rough time. And I think, you've just like put your shit into I've had a really rough time when actually you were on the floor. You were yeah. on the floor with nobody to pull you up. And I think she's not recognised for that. And that is where that I'm being fake comes from. Because often we can't share aspects of the darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just have to live them, go through them. And people think, oh, they're all right. They're happy. They're on a fluffy cloud. They're amazing. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's not going to work for way. me. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. And I get that, Lisa, because, you know, I've really, in this time, it's so crazy you say that. In this time, I've only been like, like I went for like a whole week and a half on a hiatus from Facebook. Like I just didn't do any, I didn't do any videos. I didn't know how to talk about it in the moment. Like I, I didn't want to, I didn't know what to say just yet. You know, like I was going through it. There was no, and I wasn't sure how to share it in that moment. And so then I, I've gotten to where I'll come in like once a week and, and, and do things the way you talk about, Alex, because I love the way both of you share, um, is I'll say, you know, here's what I'm going through. And it's yeah. really, really tough. And, you know, and, and here are the ways that I'm working through it. And here's what I think the meaning of it is. But a lot of times it's like when I get to that Monday, it's the week befores, you know, yeah. stuff. Yeah. And then next Monday will be this week's stuff because... It is tough sometimes to know what to share. So I, I, I think I encompass both of you. It's like, I want to share the hard stuff, but I don't quite know exactly how until I move through it, you know? But it's, it's also really, really difficult. Go on, Lisa, you first. I was just going to say, it's really difficult if other people are involved and a lot of stuff that's going on isn't yeah. necessarily all yours. Yeah. <laughs> <But it's> very, <laughs> 
connected to you if that makes any sense yes. oh it makes perfect sense perfect <laughs> but sense. i do think you are such a mixture of the both of us the uh, the universe definitely brought us together i feel oh, like man. you know what i really feel like doing today lc i feel like you need a really big alex and lisa hug oh my gosh I really, really do. Mine. I just want to give you a really big hug today. <laughs> I just did a virtual one. <laughs> I need it so much. I've been looking so forward to seeing you two because I oh. believe that too. Like I believe it with all my heart. Do you know what's really strange about this whole situation? Well, not even strange, but it's, it's also like a philosophy. And I know that you feel this way because of what we spoke before. But, you know, I very much have to go over the past to get to the present. I have to. Yeah. Like, and thankfully I've got a really good best friend who will listen to that past, even though she's heard it. And I mean a lot, <laughs> but it's this, I feel annoyed about this in my childhood. Just, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's 30 years ago now. Come on, come on. <laughs> but she's what brings me back into the present because she doesn't allow me to go to that place you were just talking about where you dwell in the self-pity and have that pity party for yourself and so but you know I didn't deserve it so I'm gonna have a drink and you know she'll keep me out of that and okay. on the flip side I will remind her of it and she won't always admit it but I think she might now because you're here but sometimes I'll say you know the reason you're feeling so sad is because xyz happened to you years ago and she goes oh, don't want to talk about that and I go no 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 you need to look at that no I don't I don't need to go <laughs> It's so difficult, isn't it? Because we've spoke yeah. about, this is something that we've learned about each other as well in the last yeah. 12 months, really. And we've known yeah. each other for over 30 years. So it's incredible what you learn, not only about yourself, but the people really close to you as well. Oh, but yeah. like Alex says, I do really struggle with going back. It's There is some reasons. And I think, oh yeah, that's why I might be triggered by that. So, you know, if somebody says something, it could go back to this and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. for me, I am a ma I've had to stop. And Alex will tell you, we've been doing certain things and training in certain things. And I've gone, you know what? I don't want to do that because it's not, it's just not bringing me joy. I don't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> and I've made this decision like I'm only going to do things that bring me joy <laughs> yeah. like, you can't just dump all the crap on me and she's like no no I can you can deal with it because you're quite to visit the past I'm not doing it I am bringing I'm living right here Alex you can do what you want <laughs> I have I've made, I've made this real real effort to do it what I do want to ask you Elsie kind of going off topic a little bit is you that. spoke before about the beginning and and um, the people around you could you just set for anybody that is listening could you just tell us a little bit about that is all right and how you did get bring yourself out of it because I think especially at this moment this could really really help people Sure. Well, sorry, I'm taking you back to your past. <laughs> I won't go there, but could you please? <laughs> I, I do that a lot. And there was a time when I couldn't go to my past without, you know, angst. But I'm so grateful to have done the work. And, and gosh, I, 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 I love you guys so much. You got such an amazing relationship. I don't think you all know how special it is. But I do. I really do. Um, well, you know, I, I started my life in, uh, you know, with a very young mother in the 70s South. So, you know, that was just turmoil anyway. But but in, in, her, um, in her angst to run from her parents, she ran from, you know, husband to husband to husband. And, you know, there was a lot of abuse in there, a lot of, you know, physical, a lot of mental, emotional, and even sexual abuse in there. And I had always known that I was different. I knew that my, my body and my head just did not match. And, and in that abuse, that really set some dysphoria for me, some body dysphoria for me really off the charts. And it seemed to be that from that moment of that abuse, that just seemed to be a theme in my life that, that everyone I, I, I came in contact with, you know, would harm me. And I used to, I, I developed a belief system that that was all I was good for and that that was just who I was. And at 11 years old, I discovered alcohol. And it was through my birth father who I desperately, you know, wanted his love. And so he was a drinker and he let me drink and that's what they did every weekend. So I thought, okay, I can get his love and... I cannot 
feel, you know, the pain of all this junk as well. And so I really started getting into, I mean, just pure alcoholism at 11. I mean, every weekend I was just drinking till I would just was out. And it, you know, it quickly led into other drugs because eventually the alcohol is not enough. And, you know, so I really led this life of, of having to hide all these secrets, you know, our secrets equal death to our story. So they equal death to us. And so I thought, you know, if I let anyone know that there's this differentness inside of me that, you know, that I don't match. And if I let them know that I've been hurt, that means I'm weak and I can't protect myself. And so I just carried a lot of these secrets. So I never could open up to anyone. And so I would, would get into these awful relationships and stay just long enough until it got real. And then I would, you know, keep running and running and running. And I was addicted. I found heroin when I was 19 and, and actually it was through pain pills. Um, and then, you know, I found heroin and I was completely addicted for 22 years. Wow. And there was a nine month relapse. I I gained some clean time through medication assisted treatment, but I had not gained recovery. I had gained a life that I could put together and think was okay. I was just taking my medicine. I wasn't messing around. I wasn't doing extra. I was holding a job and family, but I was angry, man. Like I was still angry. My mindset was the same. I mean, my life still revolved around that medication. Yeah. And that's why I fight so hard for medication assisted treatment. There is a good, it's a great treatment if we do it in the right way, if we teach people how to get free, you know? And so, but I ended up getting off of the medicine because everybody said, oh, well, you, you could get away from that stuff. And, and so I did. And about six months I lasted and then I relapsed on heroin my family separated, my wife and son, they went back. I was a total mess. I was back on heroin for nine months, but that relapse saved my life because it was in that moment. I got arrested during that time. I had built too much to lose in that time. And I just got sick and tired. I was just like, man, I can't do this. So I'm either going to pack up what little stuff I have and leave here today and just go all out or I'm gonna figure out how to get this thing together. And I knew that it started with my mind. I, I, I knew that. I knew that I had to heal from those root causes because I had enough awareness to know that I wasn't using just because I wanted to. I was using to cover up pain. I was using to cover up the pain of never being able to be myself, never knowing who I truly was and where what's the point of living life if there is no hope for a better tomorrow? And they're, they're just, that, that was the thing. And so I said, I gotta do this different. I did go back to the medication assisted cause I knew it was gonna help my body, but I determined to use it differently this time, to use it just to, to keep my body sane while I worked on my head and my heart. And that was my focus. And I, I picked a program that, you know, had rules. I picked a program that had good accountability. And I used my counselors to the point where they were just like, wait, we don't, what are you doing here? We're not really supposed to talk about issues. Wait, wait, wait. And I'm like, uh-uh, you're going to help me. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to help me. I am not leaving here until you do. And I just started, re I just started looking out when I started learning about tapping it's when I started learning. And the crazy thing is when I got clean, my wife and I went in together because they were back with me at this point. My wife had gotten addicted to heroin for the first time and we went into treatment together, but she wasn't quite ready. And in that year, that first year where I had made this decision, I'm going all in, she had a relapse and she was relapsed for the first two years of my recovery and that was, and I, I think, oh my God, you know, and you have that, what are you doing to me? Like, <laughs> see, no, but I can't succeed. And I was like, nope, that's that old mindset, man. You're gonna succeed. 
You got to have this experience so that you can know what it's like to be on the other side of addiction. I didn't know that then, but I needed to know what it was like to be a family member of somebody in active addiction, how to, how to walk those lines of enabling versus being healthy. You know, I had to raise our son in the process of that while trying to keep him from seeing what was happening with his mom and losing that, you know, losing some kind of respect for her. I didn't want that to happen. You know, he was a teenager. Um, So there was a lot that I had to do at that time and try to be in recovery and try to stay sober and try to heal my own shiz. So it hasn't been no easy process. And something you said in the beginning is I think what sets us up so many times for failure is when we think that if I put away the drugs and the alcohol, then I'll be able to live life. Yes. And that gets us in trouble because yes. it comes and life comes quick. And just because you're sober doesn't mean life says, oh, okay, I'll give you a break. You know, we'll wait till you're ready. No, it comes. It comes. And, and you got <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, it is. It really, really is. And until we change our perspectives to see that, man, it's always working for our betterment, you, you can't see it. You just can't see it. Man. And so that's my story. Seven, I'm working on eight years now, man. I'm still sober. I've grown. I grow from all that. And I'm, I'm grateful to be alive, man. I, I love you. I absolutely love you. I, 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 I mean, I did anyway. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I did. That's what I was just going to say. I did anyway. I had masses of respect for you anyway. But hearing your story, I'm actually a bit annoyed that we have never asked your story until today. I can't believe we didn't know the my background. My first time in your hot seat. My first time that's in your hot true. seat. <laughs> but you know what? What I've got to say is, and this is the thing, and this is what I'm talking to people about every day. There is never going to be a right time. There is never going to be a better day. There is never going to be just when I've done, just when this, just when the other, you know, when I'm saying it all the time, you're going to wake up tomorrow and something's going to be thrown at you that you didn't know about. You know, there's never a right time. It's the same having kids, never a right time. There's never a right time to give up your job. You've just got to do this shit and get on with it. it. Do it. You just just got to do it. You just got to do it. And that's the thing. You're never not going to be afraid. It's a lie to tell you that life is ever going to, that you're going to arrive somewhere and, oh, I'm not going to have to deal with this stuff anymore. No, it's never life that's changing. It's you that's changing. And it's you that has to grow to where life comes and, and you get into a place of gratitude, just knowing that man, this is, this is all working for me because, you know, I had gotten in, I would think I was in my fifth year of recovery before, and I, I was doing videos at this time, and I was telling people about working on your root causes, your head and your heart, and I worked through all the pain of my past, I worked through all of that, and then there was just this still, the whole gender thing, and I was trying to be, oh, no, we don't have to deal with that, I got all this stuff good. I had built a speaking career. I was, you know, things were taking off. I was speaking in government. You know, I was making changes in the area that I live in. And this nagging thing just kept saying, oh no, we've got one more route to deal with. You, we're not, you don't get by with this one. And I'm like, shh, shh, we're okay <laughs> at this point. But I could not continue to move through not authentic to myself. So That was the thing when my son's graduated and he doesn't have to deal with a whole transgendered father, all that that stuff. It'll be the right time when he graduated, my right time had shown up and I was just like, oh God, what's my next right time going to be? Yeah. The doctor came to me, you know, it was like everything just fell into place and I was like, okay, well, this is the right time and I got to step through it. And it wasn't, of course, the right time. (laughs) <laughs> um, never is, but you know, I'm two and a half years into my gender transition and to see who I truly am e- emerge every day is even more exciting. It's like Christmas morning every day. Oh. It's like, hey, you, you look like you, man. That's this here you are. And you can all- see your change on your Instagram. Yeah. You know, I, I was really, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Even like over the last few months, I can definitely see a change in you. Uh, How is that feeling physically for you, if you don't mind us praying? Well, it's feeling amazing 
But at the same time, I have come to some different emotional things, which is which has inspired me for a new project called the Transgender Mentor because yeah. because we don't talk about the emotional changes that happens between the horm the different hormones that go in your body. Like I show up different now in places with my family, friends. I mean, there's so much, and and we don't really talk about it. When you look up transgender, we're all looking up, you know, physical changes yeah. and surgeries and all of that stuff. But nobody's talking about what's it like to go from showing up with a body full of estrogen to a body full of testosterone now. Very different human beings this is, you know. I have a better respect for heterosexual couples ever because you're like... <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're glad to get rid of some of um, our hormones, though. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. PMT. Man. Yeah, but you know what? I reckon that testosterone can make you quite aggressive. It's got <laughs> You know, I was so afraid because I was an, oh my God, I was so angry back then. I was so afraid to start testosterone because I told really, my doctor, yeah. I said, I'm so angry. I'm afraid I'm just going to, like, I cannot get any more aggressive. <laughs> and she said, I think you're going to be surprised because most of your aggression comes from not being who you are. Yeah. And you know, she was right. She was really right. Like my, I, I, I mean, I, I have broken knuckles from fighting all my life and hitting. And I mean, I was just so aggressive about the first few months. It really, it, it really put it up to, it scared me. And then after that, it really just started leveling out to where now mm -hmm. I don't feel that way anymore. And it really affirms to me that, okay, I really am on this right path because uh, you'll question it. I mean, how many times, ladies, you know this, will you question that you're on the right path, yeah. even though yeah. you know you stepped on the right path? Yeah. You'll still question it, you know, but because yeah, things it's, keep it's, coming trying to kick you off your path and you're like, no, yes. I'm staying on this. Path. I will get there. Do you know, do you know what's, what's really apparent though? And I guess it's like what you said a second ago that I was clean and sober, but I hadn't recovered or I didn't know how to recover. I wasn't recovering. And it's kind of the same. Really, that's been the story of your life, hasn't it? Like you've been this person yeah. inside with a soul and with a spirit and the outside hasn't matched up. And yes. look at you now, you're like whole <laughs> yes i'll be honest with you elsie i don't care what body you're in i just love you the person Thank you. that's what people should should be talking about with this yes. journey you know we love the person you are you and that to us is just everything because you're amazing oh man i love you guys so much it makes me feel just so whole just to be sitting here with you ladies because i love making these connections and and you're right, that is what we should be talking about. And that's what I want people to see because, you know, gender transition closely relates to the recovery from transitioning from, you know, an absolute annihilated person to now this new sober person to these connections that we're missing in life is to human connection. It's yeah. like these shells mean nothing. They're just a job to do on earth. It's a vehicle to drive while we're here to do our little jobs. But, you know. <laughs> I've said that, Elsie, I've got to say, it. I've said that it's to so the true. little girl. And when I've tried to explain to people, that's the only way I can kind of explain what my belief is, is that our body is just like a car. It's like a vehicle. And once that car, it can get battered, it can get smashed up, it can break down, it can, and eventually we'll step out of that vehicle yep. But yep. yeah, it's just, I'm so with you. Honestly, I just love you. <laughs> I could talk to you all day. <laughs> I know. I know it because it's so true. You know, I, we got to realize that we are not our bodies. We are not our addiction. We are not our past. We're not our story. We are just this amazing soul just, just here you know, to do beautiful things in the world. And our world needs love more than ever. Oh. It needs human connection more than ever. That's why I, that's what I think the whole trans movement is about. I mean, who else encompasses love or the embodiment of, of every person than somebody going through gender transition? It's like, you know, I can, I get you, I get you. 
you know, like, like, let's just get each other now because we're just yeah. a soul. It must so, be so hard for you, though, as well at times, you know, because oh yeah, y'all, you must sometimes just think, oh, why have I had to go through all of this? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> this is what I was just going to say. Is the saying of women from Venus and men are from Mars actually true? <laughs> yes, it's true. It's, <laughs> really true. it's so so true. There are well, so many things that I could tell you guys now that would just help your existence so much because we then need you a book at, you yeah. you can look at your sons and husbands and go i get you now like we'll have to talk in private sometimes i'll let you in on some secrets <laughs> oh my, you know what lc i am gonna take you up on it because i swear to God, <laughs> my sons feel like aliens at times and my husband <laughs> an alien you're like why don't they just understand well i'm gonna find out you're gonna definitely be coming on again for another hour but we're not gonna record we just <laughs> that sounds good <laughs> I'm down with it. I'm down with it. <laughs> it's oh, crazy. Honestly, like we we could literally go on and have another episode. And I know we always say this. <laughs> Tam, you said you've got to come back on the podcast, and we did. But you really have got to come back on the podcast because this is not finished. Anytime. <laughs> this Anytime. is not finished, is it? Lisa? I'm with you girls all the way. You call. No, I'm here. I needed this today as well, Elsie. I've been really looking for, honestly, when I was driving back from work, then I was like, oh, I can't wait to get a bit of a dose of Elsie today. <laughs> I needed this, my, I needed, I needed you ladies this day. I'm telling you, really, I really, really did. And, you know, the internet was off and I was thinking, okay, well, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna stress about it. But then there was this other part of me that goes, we really need this. Like yeah. at this time in our history, like we really need a dose of these ladies, man. We need oh. to be sticking together, don't we? And I think it's easy yes. to get sidetracked and get on with our own things. But, you know, sure. it's these connections, like you said, they're so important. They really yeah. are. And I know the people that listen to our podcast are going to get so much from this. I have done. I um, have. It's just like a whole, every time we get somebody on, by the way, me and Lisa leave and afterwards just want you to know, we'll go, I feel like I've had therapy. And she'll go, yeah, I know. It's amazing, isn't it? We don't need therapists because yeah, we're, we're just getting a load of free therapy. <laughs> I know, I know. That's the secret. Don't tell anybody. That's what we're yeah. all doing. It really is. And you know what? I want to say something, and I know this might sound really cheesy, but I get the name Hope in Recovery. Oh. Really do bring yeah. hope to people in recovery. And on that yeah. note, I really want you to share where people can follow you, find you. Just come and come and be with you. Where did before you do, before you do, because I, I thought you was going to say exactly what I was thinking, Alex, because I was like, I really get the name Soul Food. Like, oh, that. Oh, I was I was looking at the banner behind you and I was thinking, and I thought you were going to say the exact same thing. I'm like, oh! That's so cool. <laughs> I do that's get Soul Food as well. You see, that's our difference, isn't it? I'm like, hope for the future. Oh. Like, Feed the soul. <laughs> I love it. You've nicked every best word ever there. We've got recovery, soul food, hope, inf information, inspiration, motivation. That is just <laughs> you there. It's amazing. That's what I hope for, man. That's all I want to give people. Because, man, if I can get this, I'm telling you, anybody can bring themselves yeah. up from that place of sheer desperation and pain and put yourself on your, your divine path. I mean, that's what it's all about. Find it. And the rest will fall into place. That's just the way I believe it is. And uh, we won't not struggle. We'll always kind of struggle, but we'll grow from it. We won't just go through it. We'll grow through it. Yeah, That's the whole point. Oh. Um, people can, all, can find the Recovery Soul Food Podcast on iTunes and Spotify. Of course, anchor.fm. Um, we're at Recovery Soul Food on YouTube. And you can find me on Facebook. That's where you should hook up with me the most, um, other than the YouTube channel, at Lona Curry at Facebook.com and Hope and Recovery Network on Facebook as well. Um, we have RecoverySoulFood.com and, um, and just, just get with me somewhere, anyway, everywhere. Just, just get with me and let's, uh, let's feed our recovery souls together, man. I mean, I, wow. I enjoy this so much. This is... This is life to me. And Hope and Recovery Network is going to be, is going to one day be 
like the next TBS for, you know, all recovery because people in recovery have great talents and they don't yeah. quite realize it or step into it because of the belief systems that they're not enough. And so I want to help them know that they are more than enough, that they're divinely talented and showcase that. And so, you know, one day we'll, we'll write television shows completely all around recovery and we'll yes. produce, you know, things like that. So look out, Tyler Perry. Here comes LC, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Come on, LC. <laughs> and we're coming to the premiere when we're allowed yeah. <laughs> with the red carpet we will you walk that red carpet lisa <laughs> i got you i got you i got you <laughs> we absolutely love you thank you so much for coming on and yeah make sure we get all those links so we can put it in the bio and get everybody over to you you right. love you man i love you guys so much thank you so much for doing this today i oh. needed this oh I thank you. you Elsie. i bye. needed this bye bye ladies <laughs>